Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to properly use an HTTP client in your application by using an HTTP client factory. You will see the advantages of using HTTP client factory and how it prevents additional problems that HTTP client can cause. Additionally, I'll show you how to create named and typed clients using HTTP client factory. So what are the problems with HTTP client? The HTTP client class implements the iDisposable interface. By seeing that, we can all be tempted to try using our HTTP client instance inside the using directive, to dispose of it once it is out of the scope. But this is not a good practice. If we dispose of the HTTP client, we are going to dispose of the underlying HTTP client handler as well. Now this means that for every new request, we have to create a new HTTP client instance, and thus the handler as well. Of course, that's the problem. Reopening connections could lead to slow performance because these connections and HTTP client handlers are pretty expensive while working with HTTP client. Also, there is another problem. By creating too many connections, we can end up using too many sockets too fast. And this can lead to having no available sockets to create a new connection. To solve these problems, we can use HTTP client factory to create HTTP client instances. Now, let's see how HTTP Client Factory helps us solve the mentioned problems. HTTP Client Factory creates and manages new HTTP Client instances, but it also works with underlying handlers. When creating new HTTP Client instances, it doesn't recreate a new message handler, but takes one from a pool. Then it uses the message handler to send the requests to the API. This means we don't have to create a new message handler for every request. And also, we don't have to open a new connection, which prevents losing all the sockets. Furthermore, since the handler's lifetime is set to 2 minutes, after that time, HTTP Client Factory uses a new message handler. This also solves the DNS issue, because when we use a new message handler, we take all the DNS changes into account. In addition to solving these problems, with HTTP Handler, we can centralize our HTTP Client's configuration. That said, let's see how we can use HTTP Client Factory in our application. To be able to use HTTP Client Factory in our app, we have to install the Microsoft Extensions HTTP library in our client application. And as you can see, I've already done that. Then, in the program class, I have to add the IHTP Client Factory and related services to the service collection by using the addHTPClient method. For now, this is enough. We are going to expand this method with additional configuration soon enough. Now, let's open the HTTP Client Factory service class. In this class, I will use the HTTP Client Factory to get the data from the already prepared web API. Now, to start with the implementation, I have to use dependency injection to get the HTTP Client Factory. So, I will create a new private, read only iHTTP Client Factory field and name it HTTP Client Factory. Also, I will initialize this field with a constructor. Now, I need options for the client when sending requests. So, let's add a new private, read only, JSON Serializer Options field and name it Options. Then, inside the constructor, let's create the options by instantiating a new JSON Serializer Options class and setting the property name case insensitive property to true. I use this to map the results on the properties with the case insensitive comparison. So, we have prepared the HTTP client factory. And now, let's add a new method to fetch companies from the API. I need a private async task method. And I will name it Get Companies with HTTP Client Factory. Now, I need an HTTP client, and to get it, I will use the HTTP Client Factory field and call the Create Client method. To increase the performance of my HTTP client, I will use streams here. So, for that, I need a using directive and inside create a response variable and call the await HTTP client.getAsync method. 
where I will pass a URI address of the web API and the HTTP completion mode dot response headers read as the second argument. The main benefit of this second argument is performance. The get async method will return the response as soon as the headers have been fully read and will allow us to process the stream directly from the socket without the intermediate memory buffer. This avoids unnecessary allocations, which is a goal in highly optimized solutions. Another benefit in regard to performance is that we can begin working with the stream of data more quickly. Now, let's ensure that I have a success status code in our response. Once I'm sure of that, I can create a stream variable and call the await response.content dot read as stream async method to read the stream from the content. Finally, I can fetch the company's result by calling the await json serializer dot deserialize async method and I expect a list of company DTOs. And let's provide the stream and the options as arguments. Awesome. After this, I can modify the execute method and call this private method for execution. Now, I will simply place a breakpoint here and run the app. And there we go. We can see two companies as a result. But we can improve this solution by using named and typed HTTP client instances. In the program class, we use the add HTTP client method to register IHTTP client factory without additional configuration. This means that every HTTP client instance we create with the create client method will have the same configuration. But usually, this is not enough, since our client app often requires different HTTP client instances while communicating with single or multiple APIs. Well, to support that, we can use the named HTTP client instances. So, let's set up the base address timeout and clear default request headers in a single configuration place. I will add a new client's name here and use the action delegate to configure my client. With these modifications, the add HTTP client method adds IHTTP client factory to the service collection and also configures a named HTTP client instance. Pay attention that this time I don't have the company's part at the end of the URI as I still have in the service class. After this, we can modify the method in our service class. Here, I need to pass a name argument to the create client method. And also, I don't have to use a full URI in the get async method. Since we are using the name of the client, the configuration that corresponds to the name applies as well. Now, let's run the app and we can see the same result. Excellent. Now let's see how to use a typed client. With the typed instances, we can achieve the same thing as with named instances, but we don't have to use strings during the registration. We can use types. So, here you can see a client's folder with a single company's client class. I will use it to implement my typed client. In this class, I will use an HTTP client instead of the HTTP client factory. So, let's create a private, read only, HTTP client field named HTTP client. And again, I will use a constructor to initialize this field. I also need serializer options. So, let's add a new private, read only. JSON serializer options field named options. Now, inside the constructor, I will simply paste the configuration as it is the same as the one we already used. Good. Now I can create a new async method that returns a task list of company DTO and name it get companies. The implementation of this method will be the same as the one inside the HTTP client factory service. So, let's copy that one without the client creation part, paste it here, 
and I will just fix this client's name and return all the companies from the method. This is our type client class with the default configuration. And I can register it in the program class by calling add HTTP client one more time in the configure services method. So we are not using the name but the type of the client. Now in our HTTP client factory service, I have to inject the new client. So let's add a new private read only companies client field named companies client. I also have to add a new parameter inside the constructor of the same type. And finally, to initialize this field. Since I have a reference to the type client, I can create a new async task method named get companies with typed client. For the implementation, I will just await the call to the get companies method. Finally, Let's first hide the previous call here and call this new method. Again, I will place a breakpoint inside the getCompanies method. And once I start the app, we are going to get the same result as before. This looks great. The logic related to type client is in type clients class, and our service is just calling that method. So, at this point, you can leave a comment to tell me your thoughts about the video and the implementation and what you use the most when working with HTTP clients. Now that you know how to properly use an HTTP client, how to create different types of clients and also how to improve the performance by using streams and completion options, I can finish the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.